Hey there, I'm Beth Irwin, and I'm so excited that you've decided to join um, this challenge about learning what our identity actually is. Who did God create us to be? And oftentimes we have a lot of misconceptions about that, and many of them actually come from a misconception about who God actually is. So we'll do a little exploration of both. But I wanted to start out and share a little bit about my personal story with you. And I think one of the best uh, descriptions that I have is I had um, been hired once upon a time, this was many years ago, to go to work of a, a temporary um, assignment in a attorney's office to audit their files. I probably was going to be there about two months. And uh, I was kind of looking forward to the opportunity to get there and meet some new people, have a little fun, do something different for a while. But that first day when I, when I got there, um, guys, I was not met by the welcoming committee at all. These folks were somewhat hostile, actually, to be honest with you. I, I found out later that apparently there was some resentment about an outsider coming in to do the job. I was given a coveted office that someone else felt like that they were entitled to. I just was not welcome. It was so unkind that when I asked where the restroom was that I, I wanted to go to the ladies' room, they, they pointed me out down the hall to the public facilities. They wouldn't even share with me where the, the private restrooms in the offices were. And this proved to be a rather fightful event for me. So I had been there, um, you know, after I'd been there a couple of weeks, I kind of gave up on trying to be friendly. I, I mean, I tried, guys. I tried to get these these folks to be friendly. And I uh, ran out probably around 10 o'clock to use the ladies' room. And I didn't go back in uh, probably until around two or three o'clock in the afternoon. Now, by this time, I've, I've gone to lunch and everything. Well, and during that season, uh, these things called peasant skirts were really popular. They were in style. They were the, the, the full, long, flowing skirts that kind of came down to your ankles. And the really cool thing about peasant skirts were that um, you, you didn't wear hose with them, and we, you know, we were we were just ending the era of you wore pantyhose with everything. And, and you guys, kind of bear with me. This is not just a girly thing, okay? But I was so self conscious about my legs, which uh, when I was a little girl, they always made fun of me because I had just super skinny legs that I, I really wanted to keep them covered. And so that morning, I made the fight fateful decision to wear pantyhose underneath my peasant skirt just in case anybody happened to see my legs during the day. So about three o'clock in the afternoon, I go running in there and I'm always in a hurry. I, I, I work fast. I'm running in there. I go in the stall and I go to lift my skirt up. Guys, hang in there with me. I'm, I'm trying to hold my skirt up and, and I I, I can't find the back of it, and I'm I'm looking, 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 and I finally I, I just you know rest my head on the stall door because I, I I I've come to the conclusion that I I realize four or five hours earlier when I had been in there I I, I had tucked inadvertently tucked the back of my skirt up into the top of my pantyhose. And I had proceeded to walk around like that all day long. Equally as painful was the fact that not one person ever said to me anything about it. I mean, no one took me aside and said, hey, you know, nobody even cracked it up. Hey, girl, put that moon up. It's the middle of the day. It's not supposed to be out yet. I mean, nobody said a word to me.
It was horrible. What I did not know and understand at that time, because kind of stuff like that seemed to happen to me a lot. It's just like, I was always doing something that I was just like, oh my God, I can't believe that actually just happened to me. It, that, that I had a mentality of an identity of, of, that was based in shame. And, and a person whose identity is based in shame, one of the things that happens to them is there's always these embarrassing moments that just seem to follow them around wherever they go. See, I, I still know one of the first times that I just burned with shame. And I, I burned with shame all throughout my childhood. I, I, I was raised up in a situation where I was um, pretty significantly neglected. And things happen to little girls who, who, who are neglected. And I, I, I came to the conclusion that I, I believed in God and I believed he was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, being. And, but that I must be a bad little girl because these things wouldn't happen to good little girls. And so somehow or another, God must have created me for the bad stuff to happen to me so they wouldn't happen to good little girls. Now, I did not know why I was created to be a bad little girl, but apparently that was the, a lot that, that fell to me in life as, as, as much as I hated it. This was something that I probably decided around five years old. And I lived with this lie my entire life. I felt like that my skirt was constantly tucked up in the back of my pantyhose and I was walking around just showing it all to everybody 24-7 as much as I didn't want to. So as we take this journey I'm so excited for you to begin to see God maybe a little bit differently and see yourself hopefully a whole lot differently and realize that we really all are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of, of, of God. We're not these dirty disgusting vessels that just get covered up in the blood of Jesus. But, oh, Lord, help us if something happens and that blood washes off and somebody, especially God, sees the ugly that's underneath. See, we're not created to be ugly. We're created to reflect the glory of God, and that is not ugly. So we're not going on a journey to cover up more of our bad stuff. We're going on a journey to reveal the beautiful, incredible human being that God has created us to be. I look forward to this time for us to be together. If you have any questions, definitely reach out to me. Let me know. Reach out to Michelle. We love you guys. And we pray God's incredible blessing upon you as we go through this journey together. Amen.